right, so on this Eureka Mignon, I have a portafilter fork that I just designed, and it is made for my little dosing cup, which is a uh, CBSC dosing cup, stainless, it's made in Korea. Uh, nice little thing that fits uh, really nice into my portafilter basket and everything. Really helps to um, not spill coffee grounds all over the place. And so uh, I've designed this so that I can just pop this thing in, and it'll turn on. And so uh, it also has pretty good retention. It's not going to pop off. You can see it kind of springs here a little. All right, got good little snap action. Um, so yeah, this thing just fits in there and it's got a little bit of give. That way I can position a little bit so that the grounds come out uh, and hit this thing. And I'm going to show you uh, how I designed this infusion and printed it. And so a couple things to point out. It just fits on the front with a little screw. Okay, so this is just a, a little three millimeter uh, metric screw, and there. And so you see this slot, um, it's got this thing on the back here um, that sits in there, and so this thing just pops in. And I've got it set up the right height. So uh, make that thing so it fits real good, so it's not gonna drop out, uh, it's not gonna vibrate out whenever the grinder's running. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go to the computer and I will show you how I designed this thing. All right, so I'm going to design a fork to hold my dosing cup. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my orientation so that I'm looking down at Z. I'm going to open up a sketch. All right, so uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is set a little line to give me a center doesn't really matter too much. I'm going to make it three millimeters because that's going to correspond to my backing plate depth. And so that's just a little sketch line. You can see I've got it set over here for a construction line. So it's not a real feature. It's just a little marker so that I know where I am. Now, my dosing cup um, has a rim on it that's about 67-ish uh, millimeters. And so I'm going to make this diameter 68. Um, just to give me a reference for the outside, and then I'm going to make sure that that is coincident right there. And then I'm going to make sure that it is vertical to my little center plane. So this is just uh, to show me kind of where the cup will sit in reference to the front of my machine. Um, again, that's just the rim. And so then there's the internal diameter. And the internal diameter... Uh, is more like 56-ish, so I'm going to make this uh, 57. Uh, I'm going to make it a real sketch. Then once again, I'm going to make that coincident here. So this is going to set the front. All right, so this is kind of where I want to limit the travel with the body of the fork um, because there's going to be a button on the machine that I want to push with this rim. So. Uh, the rim's just there to guide to give me an overall view of how big that thing's going to be. But then this is the actual diameter of the body um, of the little dosing cup itself. Now I'm actually going to duplicate and do another circle because I'm going to set um, a distance. So let's make this vertical with this. And then I want to set the distance here. Uh, I'm going to give it about 15 millimeters of play. And that'll give some room for the cup to slide back and forth in here. I don't want it to be, uh, you know, too restrictive. Um, let's see, what else do we need to do? Okay, um, so this is going to kind of drive the middle. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is just drive a little line. Um, so give me a line. I'm going to make that solid. I want it to be tangent uh, to both of these circles. So I want uh, this line to be tangent to this circle and I want it to be tangent to that circle. And so it just gives me um, kind of a straight line in between them. Then I'm going to make this dot coincident here and then this dot coincident there. And so now I've just got a straight edge um, formed here. And then uh, I can just duplicate this. So I'm just going to mirror it, um, mirror it along, let's see, 
select the line and mirror it along this line. So that'll just pop it over to the other side. So I've got a duplicate line. And so this is going to be like, uh, this is going to be the inside. Okay, so now I've got to draw the outside of my forks. I'm going to start back here. I'm going to come out and I'm just going to leave that uh, right there. Now, as far as like how wide do I want this thing to be, I'm going to draw an outside diameter. I'm going to center it here and I want to give myself basically another uh, 20 millimeters, so maybe 10 millimeters out. Um, that'll give me a 10 millimeter wide kind of lip here. Um, and so if I do this and then I do dimension on it, um, I can point at this dimension plus 20. Okay, and so that'll give me an extra 10 millimeters on each side. Um, then, uh, let's see, I can draw another line here where I connect. Uh, whoop, line where I connect this dot uh, to this. I'm going to make that a real line. Um, and I want to make that tangent here. And this uh, also I want it to be vertical. There we go. All right. Um, so I think if I make this parallel, it'll tell me over constrained. Yep, over constrained, so I don't need that. Um, let's see, what else do we need? I need another little line just to make this solid from here to there. Let's zoom in. Actually, I can just uh, undo that. I'll make that solid. Okay, so now I've got that drawn. Um, the last thing is uh, I want to cut uh, this particular piece of geometry because what's going to happen is I'm going to get this piece and this piece and that's going to be the outside of the portafilter fork. So I need to cut it um, at an angle. All right, so I'm going to cut this thing at a 30 degree angle. So if I just tab over 30, give me a 30 degree wedge there. Now when I click on these, so that's going to give me the outside shape uh, of my fork. All right, so next thing I need to do is mirror these pieces of geometry. And let me go ahead and mirror those around this line. Hit OK. And so now I have the shape of my portafilled fork um, that I'm going to extrude. So let me do finish. Then uh, let me extrude. And let's see, I want to extrude those this way. Oh, I yeah, want that. Uh, let's make it eight millimeters thick. Give that a look. All right, not bad, not bad, not bad. All right, so that's what our fork in general, that's our basic shape. All right, so um, let's start defining this thing. So let's take these and we're gonna round that. Um, let me do, I think five ought to work the way I've got it built because I gave myself 10 millimeters thick. So a, a five millimeter fillet rounds that right off perfectly. Okay, so let's also round these back edges. Take that, fill it. Um, let's see, what do we want? And let's just do something simple, make it 25. All right, so now we're getting the fork. All right, so we've got our portafilter fork designed. Um, this is actually the bottom and this is the top um, because this is going to be the top whenever it's on the machine, but it's going to print on this side. So everything is going to come up from there as far as the print orientation. So this is the top from the print orientation side, even though it's actually the bottom of the fork. So we come around here, we're going to put a sketch on this. So again, I need to flip this thing upside down so that we get uh, the print orientation, correct. All right, so first thing is I want, uh, I've measured this on the machine, I want the center of the screw to be about 12.25 millimeters from the top of the fork. That'll give me a good spacing. That way, whenever it's attached, um, it will be um, basically the right distance from the button. Uh, where it turns the grinder on. So this is going to be a three 
uh, millimeter screw. Let me give it just a touch more. Okay, and so uh, that's where the screw hole is going to be. Um, a little bit more than three millimeter because once this thing, uh, it's going to print, it's going to be a little tighter. Um, and I don't want it to be too tight, so it's not too much of a pain uh, getting that thing through. So there's a piece uh, that's going to be a square around here that is actually going to fit. Um, this is basically going to be uh, the little block that goes into the machine. So on the front of the Big Non, there's that little uh, rectangular opening that this is going to fit into. Uh, it's, so that's going to be about 25 and a half millimeters wide and five and a half millimeters tall. Okay, so there's that block. Um, now beyond that, we just need another little rectangle to connect. Um, so let's see. All right, so let's make sure that that is vertical here. just make that coincident there with that corner make sure that that one yep okay um, so that's just going to connect it and then uh, I want a little bit of a lip below um, so let me put another little rectangle here and let's make it three millimeters tall so that's going to give me a lip uh, so basically whenever this thing is on the machine it's going to be like this there's going to be a block coming out the back and then I want a bit of a lip here um, that this thing will actually rest against the machine. Well, I'm, I'm going to need a little bit here for strength purposes. Okay, so let me finish that sketch up. All right, so now I'm going to select uh, these faces and extrude that again. Gave myself three millimeters here. Yep, so I mentioned whenever I set up that first sketch that I was going to have three millimeters, so that's the right thickness that I want. So there we go. Um, all right, so there we are um, so far, right? That's how we look. Now I'm gonna give it some support on each of these sides. So we come up here, I'm gonna grab these and I'm gonna put in some round fillets. Let's just go 10 millimeters. So that's gonna give me a little bit of bracing there. And then I can turn the sketch back on and I'm gonna pull this block out. I'm going to pull that out about five and a half millimeters, about right there. All right, so now we're getting it set up again. This is going to go into the front. Okay, so that's kind of where we're looking. All right, so, um, so that's current design as is. Again, this is going to go into the machine and then it's going to rest on the machine like this. Okay, um, let me turn that sketch off. Okay, on the front here, I want to countersink this so that the... Uh, the bolt actually, let's see, so let's make that about five and a half. Um, I don't want the bolt to be sticking out. I want it to sit kind of flush. So I'm gonna sink this in a few millimeters. All right, so that'll give me a little countersunk hole, all right, for my uh, my screw to go into. And believe it or not, we're almost done. Um, so now I need to just uh, make the thing look a little bit better. Um, I want this to fit into that hole pretty easily, so I'm gonna chamfer this. Uh, just give me a millimeter around that. So that'll make it easier for that to go into the machine without getting hung on the edge. All right, uh, let's see. Next up, I want to probably fillet that a little bit or fillet that a bit. Let's see, let's go. How much will it let me? About six and a half. Is that as much as it'll let me do? Let's do that. Makes it a little smoother. Okay, uh, next up, I want to get rid of this edge just a bit. Let's do, can I do 2.75? All right, got that smooth. And, uh, okay, so there we are. And I want to smooth this up just a touch. Think about like that. I don't want it to be totally rounded. I want it just a touch there on the bottom uh, to be flat. So two millimeters looks pretty good to me. And I think that's it. So that's gonna be the entire fork. 
Again, it's going to sit like this. Uh, what this does, and you can see I've got this thing tapered because I followed the, the big circular radius. Um, that is going to give me a little bit of a snap so that it won't just fall out the front uh, whenever that cup is sitting. It's going to snap in there. It's going to hold. All right, and I've got a little bit of smooth down there at the bottom. Now, the way this thing is going to print, it's going to print like this. All right, so I'm going to have one little support back here um, under this lip and maybe a little bit through the screw hole, depending on how I get it set up. But it should print pretty easily. doesn't need to be real strong either, so it ought to print pretty fast. Um, but yeah, um, there you go. That's a little quick design. So let's uh, hop over to Cura and we'll get this thing set up to print. All right, so just loaded this thing in. Let me arrange all models here. All right, so there is my model again. You can see it's printing it upside down um, as it's in here. All right, um, now I'm gonna get this thing sliced. Let me do a little preview. I'll show you what it's gonna look like. Now I actually have uh, adaptive layers turned on here. So you can see, uh, I'm also using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. So I got a pretty big fat nozzle because I like to print fast and I don't really care if this thing looks uh, exceptionally good or not. But you can see um, it's pretty thick layers. And then once it gets to this fine detail up here, it goes to, you know, it steps down to much finer layers um, throughout this top. I've got one block of support and yeah, it's got a little support inside there. Um, and so that's how it's going to print. All right, so let's send that over to the machine. Should be pretty fast, um, since it's only going to be 21 minutes. So let's uh, get this thing to the printer and we'll see what happens. Alright, so uh, next up, just got to take the support off. So I've got a pair of pliers here, so that should just pop off. Alright, so there's our finish at the bottom. And we've got to take the support out of the middle. Okay, so support out of the middle there. Okay, so next up. There you go. Okay, so that's the complete design from start to finish. Uh, if you got any questions, just let me know. Thanks.